disclaimer, this is not a how-to video, this is how I'm doing it. Right, I've procrastinated for far too long. Let's get this motor swapped out on this thing. Getting a little bit tired. First thing to do before we do anything, is get it unplugged. Don't want to get electromacuted. I'll get it dragged out and we'll get the motor ripped off. So here's my existing electrical control. So this one's the input coming in the bottom from the main supply. This is the one going to the motor, which is now going to be running. What I'm going to do is mount the AFD under there. You can see a bit better. Probably around there. I may even go off to one side where it would be a little bit easier. And then power that from the existing um, run start and stop from the front, which is a bit easier, and have a remote control set up for actually controlling speed, forward, reverse, etc. But first thing we'll do, we'll get the motor on. A few moments later. That's the motor mounted. Bit of pissing around. Doesn't help that the web on the bottom of that isn't flat. So when you put in nuts and bolts in, they actually go on a bit of a skewed angle. So I've had a piss around, make a couple of spaces up and things just to get everything to sit nice and flat. So on with connecting up the electrics. So for the motor, I'm using some SY cable. I know it's not recognised by a lot of British standards for fixed wiring, but in this application, it's fine. Because I'm using the VFD, you can get a bit of interference off the harmonic waves, that are, sine waves that are generated by the VFD, which can affect other electrical systems. So it's a bit of shielding, use a bit of SY. Easy enough to strip. Cut your boot to size, roughly. Sort of feel where it is. Probably about there. Fit your boot, get rid of that. Strip back the outer sheath. This stuff isn't suitable for use outside. It can't be buried because water gets soaked up in it. It's not an armoured cable either. Just stab you with that. It can be quite tricky, depending on the manufacturer's brand, to actually strip this outer sheath off. So now that's now exposed steel sheath bit. What we'll do sometimes it's advisable to actually stick your gland on before you do it, depending on the size of the cable. He says with these, should have done that before stripping the sheath off, really, shouldn't I? But you know, hey ho. Slide that down out of the way. Right, next thing we need to do is trim all this back. Just run a screwdriver through it. Separate the braids. How to give the imperfect demonstration. hand now let's roughly split them in half ish doesn't have to be perfect so you got two bits and twist them Don't have to do the full length because it will be getting chopped off. Now we've done that, we make sure we have actually got that washer on there. So that goes underneath like that. And the metal pieces, the braids, go in the slots in the castle gland. Another washer on top. Put your lot on. 
Now what we do, we wrap one round that way, one round the other way, so they meet, and just trim them off. Do the lock knob. What you do then is tighten all that up, tighten up this piece as well. Sometimes they do clamp on, sometimes they don't, depends on the size of the cable. And I see you do, you run your boot up, and that's that cable terminated. It's all nipped up, last thing, just score around there, around the packing. And he says, with ease. If you go too deep, you can cut into the cable insulation. I just need to anybody would think I've never done this before. There we go, that slid off. As you can see, we've got the three phase colours on this one. Some SY cable are all black, but they are numbered. So we'll get this plugged into the motor and go for the next bit. So that's the motor connected up at this end. The motor's connected in Delta configuration. I'll show you a picture of the back of the um, plate, which tells you the difference between Star and Delta. The VFD wants to run on Delta. I've used the old sliding fork connectors there with mechanical connection to earth and because this gland here is screwed into the bodywork into the framework of the motor I've not bothered with the banjo so basically if the general principle will be if you can screw the gland into the metal you don't need a banjo if you can't screw it in put a banjo on for a better mechanical earth connection so we'll now move on to mounting the VFD now, I don't know how well this will come out on those bits of crimson ferrules on the end Basically stop the ginger pubes from sticking out and going all over the place while I'm trying to put them in. So I'll get them terminated and we'll get it fired up and see what happens. So that's the VFD connected up. Life supply coming in from the switch gear. I've from the SY going out. I've put the actual gland on there with the banjo and put an earth stud on to commercial all my earths into there rather than try and get all three into this one earthing point up here. All tied off nice and neat. I've left a little hole there for put another stuffing gland in for my control cable which I'll do at a later date so everything's nice and secure let's get it fired up and see what happens righty let's give it a go we have humming and buzzing that's always a good sign power it up let's go speed and reverse So, successful day getting that wired in. Well, I would say a day, a couple of hours scrabbling around on my knees in the cold because it is quite cold today. Uh, next thing to do will be wire up a little remote switch for that so I can control it all without kneeling down or anything. And I also want to put a bit of protection around the box so I don't smack it with a bike when I'm putting them back in the garage. But as for today, that'll do. Thanks for watching.